input simple example folder in the stats uh, repository. And then we will go through the hands-on session to bring it together. Okay. So back to the flow chart, uh, you can see that the bottom four uh, blocks are basically the scope of analysis. And uh, that we, don't have, we already have codes for. And whatever is outside uh, the box, we need to prepare. And there are three types of inputs to be prepared here. We have the design points, we have the model predictions, and we have the experimental data. Okay, now let me try to go over the format of these files. So for today's exercise, these are already being prepared for you. Uh, so you just have to take a look. Let's start with the experimental data. The format looks like this. It's quite simple actually. Uh, on the top, there are some header showing basic information like DOI, uh, what website comes from, what's the experiment, what system, what centrality, and so on and so forth. And then there is the label header, uh, the table header. In this case, it says that the first column is minimum value of x, second column is maximum value of x, third column is y, statistical uncertainty, the lower part, and the higher part of statistical uncertainty, and the systematics. Uh, we can have a lot more columns here that we will talk about tomorrow. And then it's just a big table. So each row is a data point, and the columns are what these label, label says they are. Okay. And if you follow this format, it should be very easy to, to convert your favorite experimental result into this format as well. Then we have the design points. So here uh, we have a header, which is what the parameters are. The, the parameters named ABC. And then each row is a design point and each column correspond to one of the parameters. So this is values for A, values for B, values for C. And you just go on until you, you list all the design points. Okay, and the final thing is the model prediction. And here, uh, the table is a bit larger, but it's it's still a table. So in the header part, you can see that what data this correspond to, like what data you're trying to predict for. And then what's the design point file uh, that they correspond to. And then afterwards, it's a, uh, a huge table. I set it to wrap, so it looks like this, but it's just a huge two-dimensional table. Each row is a prediction for one data point for all design points. So for design point one, the prediction for first data point will be 1.2, for second data point will be 1.3, and so on and so forth. And then the second number is the second design point, third one, fourth one, and so on. Okay, so essentially what you have to do when you make your, your own thing is to dump the results into a big two-dimensional table in plain text, and then it can be used in the stack package. Okay. And there's also the format specifications here. This is the link, you can click on it uh, afterwards if you have time. And all the input file needed for the exercise today is prepared in this folder, so we don't have to worry about the details on that for now. And let's now move on to the actual hands-on analysis part. Okay, so first thing first, let's uh, try to make sure things are running. So first go to the Docker base directory that we've been using the first week of the school. And then we update the stat directory. 
So uh, if you haven't checked things out yet, uh, you can do a git clone to, to check it out. And if you have checked it out already from the instructions before, then you go in there and do a git pull uh, to make sure things are up to date. And then finally in the stack folder, uh, we switch the summer school branch by doing this. Okay, let's pause here for a little bit to, for everybody to, to do this. So please press yes if you are able to, to go to the end of here. So while, while we're doing the poll, one question uh, from the Slack channel. Uh, did you use the Latin hypercube to select the design points? Uh, that's one way to do it. Uh, you don't have to do it, but so in this example, no. Uh, but generally, that, that's a good idea to use that. Okay, uh, maybe let me switch to, to the hands on part. So um, inside the Jetscape Doctor directory, you should see this. So you have the Jetscape analysis on the school that was from before. And if you check it out, there should be a stat field in here. If not, you do git clone here. And if yes, you go in and do a git pull. So all of these are done outside of the of the Docker container. I think you can also do it inside the doesn't really matter. Okay, how are the numbers now? It looks, looks like that everyone that's uh, tried it is uh, successful, so good. Okay, let's wait just one, one or two more minutes. Okay, I don't see any notes. So if you have a problem, please ask on Slack and then the co-instructors will, will try to help you out. Okay. Okay, then once you have that, let's start the Docker. And uh, the most important point thing here is we need the support forwarding to when we start the Docker. Otherwise, you will not see the Jupyter notebook. Okay, let me clear the poll now. And, and then you start Jupyter notebook as this, and then copy paste this URL into, into your browser. So it will look like this. So Docker, or whatever I it. And then once you run this, you're inside the, the Docker container. And then you run Jupyter Notebook. And you will get this link where we just open the browser. Okay, uh, if you forgot the comments, it's, it's also here. 
And the notebook we will be using is this Just Case Summer School hands on session without the part two. Okay, uh, can you please click yes again if you're able to open it? Just to make sure everybody is on the same page before we go on. Okay, so we uh, just got one request Yi, for you to speak just a little bit louder, if you can. Okay. Thanks. Okay, I think we have one issue, but it, it looks like it's being addressed in the Slack channel. Okay, great. <clears throat> okay, then let's move on for now. Uh, okay, we are already doing this. Okay, now here's the analysis setup. It's a very simple analysis because the goal is the, how to use the code itself. So we have the truth function like this, so it's a polynomial, y equals to a plus b times x plus c times x squared. And suppose we have two experiments measure this thing. One in the high x region, plotting uh, x versus y, and one in the low x region, also plotting x versus y. And the goal for, uh, for this, part of the session is to try to learn, see if we can learn ABC using the step pattern. Okay, and uh, the way to, to go for this uh, notebook is that uh, throughout these uh, this notebook, you will see a lot of like blanks and that's supposed to be filled by you and then we and then we can keep running. <coughs> okay, then let's go through it together. So first step is to load all the relevant modules. Uh, basically all, import all the necessary things. There's not too much to say here, except we just run it. So to run it, uh, you can press shift enter, or shift return, or you can press this button here. Okay, either way works. So we run it, and we load everything. Okay, it's done already. Okay, now, Let's move down to the first step, which is to prepare the input files. So the input files are already prepared for you. 
So all we have to do is to type in the file names here. So if you go to the stat uh, directory, you can see there's the input folder, all the input files are there. And for, ex for this example, we were using the simple example folder. And inside here, you can see all the files. So there's the data from the first measurement and data from the second measurement. It has a design file. But the prediction uh, for the phase base of the first measurement, and we have the prediction for the phase base of the second measurement. So to start with, uh, let's put the, the first measurement in here. So something like this, and just run it. So what this does is that there is this reader class, and uh, it's a set of functions that reads in the, the desired format into, into Python objects. So if you have more data, then you have just more lines from this and, and so on. Okay, now once we have loaded the external inputs, let's move on to actually set up the analysis. So this is the, the heart of the, the part that usually we have to edit. So first of all, we can see there are the, the information, basic information, for example, what's the, what is the collision system method, 5.2 TT. And what are the parameters? What are the labels to use in plots? What are the ranges on the parameters? And what is the observable? So here observable is called Y. And because we only run on one data to start with, we only have one bin, like one measurement, which we will label as C0. And we can label it whatever we want, it doesn't matter. But here we label C0. Okay. And then let's prepare the data into the right format. So data for the method system for the observable Y for the measurement C0 is what we just read uh, from the output from the external input and this is basically just a di di dictionary that contains everything so if you have more measurements then you will edit this to have more things okay and then we have the prediction similarly for the net for observable y for measurement c0 and then the y value is this, what we read in, the x value we get from data. Because it's one to one correspondence. Okay, and then after that, we can set up the covariance matrix that encodes the uncertainty information from data. And so how we can do this is we set a covariance for let let 5.2t or 2 tv and the covariance between c0 measurement of y and c0 measurement of y is a matrix and we can use this function to to populate the matrix from the uh, from from the data files so this means that uh, we are setting the covariance matrix of this measurement with itself. So we only have one measurement here, so it's, so it's just one matrix or one element here. And if we have more, then we can add more here. That will come later.
update. And then we set everything into this old data and then dump into the, the temporary file, which contains all the settings of the analysis. Okay, there is no blank here, so let's just run it. Okay, uh, so any questions so far? On what each lines are? Okay, I see uh, a question uh, on Slack about the uh, length parameter. So this is the, so for systematic uncertainty, uh, there could in principle be some correlation between the bins. And this is uh, one way of guessing that correlation. And I will talk a lot, a lot, a lot more about this tomorrow in tomorrow's session. So let's postpone the, uh, the discussion to, to, to that. Okay, uh, don't see any questions for now, let's move on. So the first exercise is just to plot data. So now we have to load things in, let's make sure we load things correctly. So the measurement, the experimental data is stored in the data key of the old data. So if you exclude this cell, it will tell you what it contains. <coughs> Uh, now, uh, based on what you see uh, up here, uh, please fill in this blanks and see if you can get the, uh, the plot for data. Uh, well, uh, so please click the yes if you get the plot. And while you are doing this, uh, let me answer some question on Slack. So the keywords of let let I mean this keyword. So this is basically it's just a string to identify which system you're looking at. If you are doing something else, you can also put something else. So the most important thing is that they are self-consistent. Everything is doing on the same same thing. It doesn't really matter if it's hard. Uh, hard code is a space or not. Okay, so the other question is what is y and x and c0? So c0 is just the measurement, uh, the label for the measurement. We can also call it some, something else. So now we only have one measurement, so it looks a bit silly that we have to give it a label, but once we have a lot of data, then we give each data one label and use that label to identify which one is which. And then the X and Y, this is just, uh, Y is what the, so if you think about this for the prediction, uh, all we have is uh, a set of Y values that correspond to each data point, right? So um, in this, our structure, we take the X from data because that's what we're trying to predict for. And then with the Y, y is just the, all the list of predict, predictions for each design point. It, it's a big matrix here. Um, well, I think not many people have got it. So uh, let me lead you how, how to do this. So you can see that there's a structure here of the data. And the, the X value is here, 
which is this array that we were trying to get to. So we, we go from top down, all data is a dictionary that has this key. And then the Y, and then C0, which is label of which data we're talking about, and then X. And when you do this, you should get uh, this array. And if you're not sure, you can always print it. You can see the, the second one here. We will print it out, and it's, it is a great reward for the x value of, of data. And then similar for y. Similar for the error. Uh, let me fill this in and then I'll explain. <clears throat> okay, so Um, I'm not sure if people are familiar enough with uh, the notation of Python. So this curly back bracket means that it's a dictionary, which is basically a key to value pair. So for example, you can have, then this dictionary, the X key equals three, the G key will equal to four. And you can see here, it's a nested thing. So the, this whole thing is a dictionary, which has this key with this value. And then this whole thing is also a dictionary with this key with this value. And so on and so forth. So you can see that in order to get to X, you need to specify all the intermediate steps. So this term, the, the Y, the C0, and then X. And then you get the value, which is what you want. Uh, Yi? Yes? If, if I may, let me just add one uh, additional comment to explain why we have so many nestings uh, in our data structure. So we, we've designed Jetscape to be able to compare to uh, multiple experimental systems uh, and multiple observables. So that's, that's the reason why we haven't just put this into a single data X, uh, but we have many, many different layers. Uh, so ho hopefully that's helpful. Yeah. So so this exercise is actually uh, just trying to lead you through what's happening inside. If you just want to run the whole thing, then we don't necessarily need to know all these. This is more for, uh, for our education. Okay, uh, let me move on. So you can see that the data we read in is like this. So X value, Y value, and with reading Y sort of data. Okay, the next exercise is to uh, try to plot theory predictions on top of the data. So for this, uh, first we need the data, which is the same as before, let me copy. And 
then we try to get the predictions from uh, from this object here. So you can see this is also uh, a nested uh, structure. So again, we have the system observable, what data we're talking about, and then the y values of the prediction and the x value of the prediction. Okay. So to, uh, then having seen this, the way to do this will be we go down the rabbit hole. Well, that 5.02, the Y observable, the C0 measurement, and the Y values for the prediction. Then we'll do the same thing for the X value. And you can see these, these are all the predictions for the design points. Okay. And you can see that it's scattered all around the place, which is good because we need to cover potential variations. The next exercise will be to plot the design points. So to see how they look like. The design points are stored under uh, this object here. And you can print it out, which so it's basically just a 2D array. Yes. <clears throat> so here we have three subplots and we want to plot the scatter plot of the different, different pairs of the design points. So since it's just a 2D array, then we can just plot it like this. So plot, plot the first column versus the second column. And then first versus third. Second versus third. <coughs> In the practice. Okay, and the next thing uh, we have to make sure is the covariance matrix. Do they make sense? And the covariance matrix, which is just the experimental error, is stored in this object here. <coughs> so if you look inside, you can see again. It's a nested structure. So for system that led 5.02, the diagonal term for the covariance matrix is a 2D array. So to plot it, we can simply do something like this. That there, and it shows you the, how the performance matrix look like. So there's a strong diagonal term, which is uncorrelated, and there are some correlation assumed between the uncertainties. Okay, then let's pause here and see if people have questions. And if they have got the plots ready. Okay, uh, let's take a poll. So if you have got all the plots, press yes. Otherwise, press no, and then we can go over things slower.
Okay, so uh, for the no's, if you can put your issues in the Slack channel, that will uh, help us to address them. Okay, I'll just scroll things through slowly uh, so that people can, can copy. So here's the 1B. Uh, he, why don't I uh, clear the poll and then uh, we can have people, uh, I, I, we don't need everyone, but for those that were no, uh, yeah, switch it to a yes if, if you, when you have it. Okay, for, for this one. Yeah. Okay, and I think there's a there's a request to hover over one uh, B. I um, think that's the I think that's the model. Yes, that's where I'm at right now. Okay, great. Okay, I'm going to move to 1C. Okay, so I think we had nine no's before. So I think we might have everyone. And if we if we don't, please uh, stay in the Slack channel, and uh, the the helpers will uh, will stay with you. Okay, and then one D.
Okay, uh, shall we move on? Uh, yeah, I think I think we can. I think we may just still have one person, but I think we can we can handle it in the Slack channel if you want to move on. Okay. Yeah. So just for information, all these exercises uh, is not really essential for running the the stat uh, framework. So if you're just running it yourself, we can skip all the exercises and, and move on. Okay. The next step is to clean past files, if there are any, just to make sure the past things don't affect us. So just execute it. Okay, now the second step is to run the emulator. So to run the emulator, uh, what we need is to run this line. So Let's exclude it. So you can see that here there are some settings, for example, number of results, the number of principal components that was talked about last uh, yesterday. And this number of results just means that we will restart 50 times from different initial conditions and pick the best one. So if this is taking a while for you to run, you can, you can change this to smaller one, smaller numbers. Uh, let's wait a little bit for this to, to run. Oh, it's done. Okay. And if you remember the, the hands-on session from yesterday, uh, we also have the, the similar outputs for each of the emulators. That was explained before. Okay, once we have run this step, uh, this next block loads it in for us to, to play with it. Okay, it basically just loads things. Okay, so now the next exercise is to check the emulator prediction. Uh, for some random point to make sure that it's doing its job. So the first block here, uh, what it's doing is, first we'll pick some random point. You can change this to whatever you want. Uh, so it's three numbers and each from zero to one. And then we ask the emulator to predict that random point to give us the prediction. Uh, let's run this and you can see that it predicts something. Now the next step is we try to plot uh, the prediction with the truth, which is this function. So to do that, we first need to calculate this function and then we get the prediction from this object. So to calculate it, I'll do things like this. A bit long. How can I make this larger? This. Okay. So this is basically we calculate for each point in the x value, 
x is just a, a grid. We calculate the, the truth based on this, this formula. You don't don't you want to square e in the in the truth y? Yes. It looks like it's not x. It's, it should be this. Yeah. Ah, no, it's good. Okay, I wait a little bit for people to catch up because it's a longer to type. There's a comment that this is too small. Okay, I hope this is better. So I would say uh, if people uh, don't have time to type everything, uh, it's okay because uh, you can also see this in the part two where everything is filled in. So afterwards you can go back and, and fill it in yourself. Okay, let's keep moving. Okay, the next step is the MCMC sampling. So the way to run it is basically this last line. We call the MCMC module. And here are a few settings. So first you have number of walkers, basically number of chains you want to do. So if you remember, MCMC operates like a chain of samples. And you can start 100 samples, 100 transfer samples from different starting points, which makes it more stable. And then uh, the two numbers here, the first 1,000 is how many samples to burn. So we run 1,000 steps, throw it away, uh, because they, they may have burning effect. And then we take 1,000 samples more for the actual samples. So let's run it. So this step should take uh, one or two minutes.
Okay, has uh, everybody run the, the MCM system? In the end, you should see a uh, writing chain to file. And then the next step is just to load it. So, um, can people press yes if the step runs fine? Okay, I see a lot of yeses and no noes. So let's move on. Okay, the next exercise is uh, we try to plot posterior function directly uh, for a equals 0 0.3, just how it looks like. To calculate posterior, we use this log posterior function from MCMC. Basically, you give it a list of samples and it gives you the posterior. So what we have to do is simply to call, to call it like this. Yeah, and in this exercise, this grid is basically just a 2D grid of B and C. So you can see it's defined on here. Okay, uh, have people got, got this already? Uh, please press yes if you got it. Very good. So uh, the color scheme is set so that the uh, the darker colors are, are better than better light colors. So we see that in this case, the posterior is, is the best down here. Okay, so most people got it already, I think. So let's move on to the next one. Okay, the next exercise is to plot the chi-square from data and truth. Uh, so instead of evaluating posterior, we can also plot a kind of a chi-square. It's not as good, but it gives us a more direct idea of how, how things look like. Okay, so first we have the same data, uh, XY systematic and search. 36, which I will just copy from before. So the, these data points are the same as before. So we'll just copy paste. And then we calculate the chi-square. So first, uh, 
we calculate the truth, what it should be for each point. Okay, so the first line basically calculate what the truth is for each point in the grid. And the second line is the calculate the chi-square, which is basically just the difference in y divided by the area on data. Oops. And I'll wait a little bit for people to, to do it uh, for themselves. And please press yes once you get it. Okay, so I think the, there are some questions of getting the opposite. Um, I'm not sure what that means. You mean the color scale is reversed? Okay, then it could be that the, this color map you're using is different. Maybe you don't have to underscore R, underscore R. That's one possibility. <clears throat> yeah, so the output of this is that uh, it, the color scale did, uh, tells you the, what the chi-square is. And darker color means that the chi-square is smaller, meaning it's a better fit. So you can see that even with this very simple chi-square calculation, the picture you get is quite similar to what you get from the posterior calculation, which takes, a, takes into account much more different things, for example, correlation and so on. Okay. 
Let's see if we have other questions. Okay, let's move on for now. Okay, the next step is to analyze the posterior samples. So there are no more blanks to fill now. So we just exclude everything. And the first one is the MCMC sample plot. So this basically plots the, the sample as a function of step. So if you remember the, the sketch in, in the slides. So x-axis here is the step uh, for the samples. And y-axis is the sample itself. And first one is A, B, and C. And each color corresponds to one chain. So you can see there here that things are relatively stable, at least from first sight. And different chains are exploring different uh, the different phase space. Okay, so if in your analysis in the future you want to do this and you find that there's some trend in the beginning, then that's a clear sign that the burning is not long enough and we need to increase that. Okay, and then uh, the next plot is the what the posterior look like. Uh, let's ex exclude it. So this is the posterior distribution of the of the sample uh, of of the of, of the output. So you can see that there's some correlation between A, B, and C with A. Uh, peaking here and B not so much constraint and C tends to larger values. Okay. And the final plot is how things look like once uh, uh, once we learned the A, B, and C. So let's wait a moment. Okay, so what plotted here is the dots are the data points, uh, same as before. And the color means uh, that the posterior distribution for on the observer Y is concentrated uh, around the data. And this tells us that at least uh, from the posterior distribution on Y, we seem to be learning uh, well with the shape. And if you see this uh, ever deviates from data too much, that means most likely that your model space is not big enough to uncover data. <laughs> okay, uh, any questions so far on, on this part one? Yeah, I don't see anything. To, do you want to do another poll just to make sure everyone is, sure. is okay? Well, I'll, I'll clear it. Okay. And uh, I'll let I'll let people, yeah, put yes or no, no if you're still having problems, and then we'll we'll try to address it in the Slack channel. But it's it's looking so far like we have everyone caught up. 
Okay, nice. Okay, now that we have all the blanks filled, we can have some fun. So uh, remember, this is only one of the two data sets that we have. We, we can also run the same thing on another data set to see what happens. To do this, go back to the beginning. Change the input from one to two for both data and prediction. Yeah, just change these. Uh, the design points are the same, just change the input. Okay. And then we simply hit restart and run all, run everything. And then wait until it finishes. While it's running, uh, we can go through all the plots and see if they make sense. So now the data looks like this. It's much more low X and we have a lot more points. And again, the design points are scattered over the place, good. And this part doesn't change. And the covariance metrics look like this, which looks reasonable. And emulator is still running. Okay, let's wait a little bit. And the random prediction looks good also. And GMC is running. I see there's a question on Slack uh, asking if there's any instance instance where the Monte Carlo converges very slowly. <coughs> um, it is possible. It, it all depends on the, the shape of your posterior function. So if uh, the shape is very disconnected, like you have a few blobs that are concentrated, but nothing really in between, then it can, it can take a lot of time for it to explore the whole phase space. So it could happen. Okay, it's done. So posterior function looks similar. And the chi-square looks similar to the posterior function, which is good. The MCMC looks reasonable. And for this, we see a different correlation of the learned parameters because it's a different data. So we get different correlations. So A is still very precise, if you remember how before, but B and C shape are different. Okay. So um, 
Any more questions at this point? I guess not. So basically, if you have uh, your own model and data, all you have to do now is that once everything is set up, you change the input file and adjust the ranges and so on, and then just run everything like we just did in the past few minutes. Okay, now let's move on to the part two, uh, this part in notebook. Uh, so please, uh, everyone, please open this one. So for this part two, we'll try to learn things using both data uh, at the same time. And the only thing we have to fill in is, are these two blocks. Everything else is filled in, so we just have to run it afterwards. So let's fill in the file names. Okay, so people please click yes if you have the file name script. Okay, so I think most people got it already. Now let's move on to the next block. You see there are a few things to be filled in. And these are mostly the same as before. The only difference is that we now have two measurements for the same thing. So for the observables, we we'll tell them that we have two measurements and the two measurements are labeled, labeled as C0 and C1. We can also label it as something else. Uh, it doesn't matter as long as you're consist consistent with, with yourself. Okay, and then the data points uh, for this, we filled in the data from, from what was read. And we can do something similar as part one, except that this time we have two data. And then similarly for the predictions. We 
do something very similar to the part one. It's just that it's duplicated so that we have two things now. Then similar for the covariance matrix. And that's all. So uh, can people try to press yes if you get it this far? I see there is a go slower button clicked. Uh, so where where do you want uh, to look at? Oh, it's gone. Okay. Okay. So I think uh, everybody has tried yes. Uh, at least most people. And I think that's all the blanks, so let's just run everything. So here you can see that uh, we have two sets of data read in and they are plotted here. So by the way, if uh, you have any questions on part one, the answers are all here. So you can just copy it to part one if you have problems here. Okay, and you can plot theory on top of data, uh, the, all the design points. And then we plot all the design points themselves. It's all the same. And the covariance matrix.
Okay, while it's running, let's see if there's any questions. Don't see any outstanding questions, so let's just wait a little bit. Okay, so seeing that it's done running, let's keep uh, checking on. So posterior plot is similar to chi square, very good. And again, the MCMC sample plots. And here we can see that 
uh, the posterior distribution are significantly tighter when we use both data sets. So if you have time, you can compare the, the results if you run on first data sets and then result when you run a second data set and then result when you run on both of them. And you can see the, the merits of having multiple measurements of the same thing and also how, how to best combine them. Okay, so I think that's all for the, for the hands-on session. I, I will go over home, the, the homework next, but before that, uh, let's check if we have any questions. If uh, if yours is still running, or uh, don't worry, uh, you can you can let it run in the background while we go over the homework. And for technical questions, uh, let's sort it out on Slack. Okay, so for the final ten minutes, uh, let me go over the homework. Okay, so for the homework, um, we will try to run the, the whole thing, but using a different input. So the, the data has been prepared, which is a digest imbalance. And we try to learn something about the drain and drain loss model from that. Okay, so let me just briefly walk you over the, the homework notebook to, to let you know what to do. So the home, homework notebook is this one, the Get Escape Summer School homework. And if you open it, uh, it should lead you, it should tell you what to do. Basically, we will generate the design points and we will calculate the, the model predictions for them. So here's the problem setup. And we have a, we have a very simple parameterization of the energy loss. And we try to see if we can learn about these parameterizations, uh, these parameters. So uh, what we have to do is first we pick number of design points. We pick the range of the parameters. And then we implement the gen energy loss uh, for simulation. And then run everything and uh, the code should pr pr produce the, the file needed for you to learn the A, B, and C. And after you run, go through these, uh, we go back to the part two, we plug them in and see if uh, we can learn things from there. Yes, we go back to the part two notebook, we change the input files to the, these new things, and then we run the whole thing. So, so that's the homework. Uh, is it clear to everyone? Uh, if you have questions, uh, let me know so that I can clarify. I don't see any questions on the homework. So uh, that's it for today, I think. And we will continue to, uh, to debug on, on Slack for, for those of you who are having problems.
Okay, now I hand the floor back to Ron. Is he, if he has any closing remarks? Okay, I think we're we're good for today. That 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 was uh, yeah, really nice uh, introduction of Bayesian statistics. So yeah, that, uh, so thank thank you, Yi. Um, I guess we can wait a few minutes in in Slack channel, but maybe maybe we're done. Uh, shall we end the Zoom session? Yes, you can end the Zoom. Um, I just want a quick reminder to people to vote on their favorite participant again. Uh, and just again, adding somebody's name is not the same as voting. You have to vote on the participant. Um, and yeah, I think we can close the Zoom and the Slack channel discussion will just continue. Okay, so thank, thank, thank you again, Yi, uh, and uh, to all the participants. And we'll uh, uh, check in with the homework then uh, uh, tomorrow. So, okay, bye, bye everyone. Bye, bye. Okay.